It's good to see everyone. Things certainly look a little a little different this year sitting up here than last, um, which I'm sure we will get into. But where I want to start is just kind of in reflection of the last few years. Uh, this is starting my fourth season with the organization and just some, some ups, some downs and whatnot. And now sitting in this seat and having the privilege to be here in this role, really it started with the question, it started with the question of what does it mean to be a Hawk? And what are some elements and things that we can look at in order for us to continuously move forward in a way that's sustainable, in a way where there's an identity that's tied to who we are. And for us, like it was, it was really about taking a few moments and, and asking more and more questions. And ultimately we landed with a shared vision and that vision has informed a lot of our decision-making and some of those key elements of answering the question of what it means to be a Hawk has everything to do with alignment and communication with uh, key stakeholders. Um, we brought in Quinn Snyder, who's been unbelievable for us and implementing a new system and sharing the same vision, um, adding some things culturally that we want to do, having a strong emphasis on development. And that's not just you know on the court, it's really off the court as well and who these guys are to bring a unifying effort, really stress the factors of team, a commitment to one another and sacrificing where we need to sacrifice in order for us to really harp on the fact that the whole is greater than the sum. Everyone has an individual part to play and everyone needs to do what they need to do, but we need to do that in a unifying effort towards our ultimate vision of being championship caliber. And so far we've done a lot of, a lot of really good work um, leading back to basically last year with the half year that Quinn had, uh, some new staff, um, some new players, a lot of the same players as well. And really bringing that alignment, not just to the coaches, but to the front office and our performance staff and how that's shaping up and everything development that we need to do there. Guys taking care of their bodies, but then also progressing them towards being the best version of themselves. And that's a common theme and a common phrase that we say a lot. So there's a lot of excitement um, for this season, for, for everything that's new and partnering with people that love their craft at the end of the day is really what we're about. So with that, I'll uh, take any questions. Hey, Landry, you mentioned reflecting on last season and everything like that. I'm curious, as you guys move forward, um, what is the main goal coming into this season? Where do you guys hope to end up? So um, we've talked about looking at some of the foundational elements. Um, what are we putting in place with our players, what are we surrounding them with? Who are we surrounding them with? And really the big goal right now is about positioning. And it's about stressing the fact that we are unified and we wanna play unselfish basketball. And of course we have goals and goals that are, um, goals that we're aiming at, but really it's about a day in day process about creating good and sustainable habits so that when you do reach those goals, you can continue to surpass them because you're leaning on the process of your work rather than just we're doing anything we can to just achieve this specific goal. So that sort of paradigm or that mindset is really what we're harping on right now. Landry, should the fan base expect more than just a playoff berth at this point? I think the fan base should expect Sort of what I just said, uh, a group that's going to go out there and absolutely give everything they have for one another. The way in which that we are implementing from our system standpoint is really about sharing the basketball, moving the basketball and doing it in a way that is still authentic to the individuals that are on the court. So that's what the fans should expect. As far as you, how have you grown in this role over the last year, uh, taking on this role and, and what have you felt you've been able to do in the off season to help you in this current GM role? It's, uh, it's been quite a, quite a journey. Um, it's been fast. I, I don't pretend that it hasn't been, but for me, it's, you know, there's a few, there's a few guiding principles in my life. And one of them is that everybody's my teacher, uh, whether you're younger, older, no matter what background you may have, I always look to learn, uh, and do that with individuals that are also learners and, partnering with Quinn, partnering with Kyle, like they're that. And just as much as I learn from anybody, I learn from them. Um, and there's a certain selflessness that needs to be had when you do that. 
you know, when you're trying to have that alignment that we're all going for. But for me, it's been it's been great. It's been a fun process. Um, really excited about how it's going to continue to evolve, uh, no doubt. You mentioned a moment ago in your opening statement about this being a, a year. We'll have a whole year now, a full season with Coach Snyder. Uh, what are some of your expectations after this offseason and such uh, from Coach Snyder, being as though he'll be able to implement his system? And what are some of your expectations from the players being able to actually, you know, perform from his system? Yeah, I mean, and again, not to not to be repetitive here, it, it is about establishing good working habits that all promote selflessness and promote daily development. Um, guys continuously learning about themselves and then leveraging that to become the best version of themselves through action and through putting them in different situations and different spots that uh, we've already started to, to have those guys look at. Um, so, you know, they've been, they've been in working and doing things on their own. Um, had a lot of guys in this off season, which is a huge, huge benefit and uh, really gives a lot of credit to, to the guys for coming in and wanting to work so hard early on. Hey, Landry. Um, uh, what do you expect to see from guys like Patty Mills and Wesley Matthews? Oh, a number of things. You know, they're, they're some of the vets on the team. Um, and frankly, they're, they're still great players, too. I think a lot of people look at them and automatically think, oh, you're kind of in this leadership veteran role. And no doubt they're going to do a lot of that. But for them, those guys can still play. They space the floor. And in this system, shooting comes at a premium, as it typically does in all the NBA. But for, for what we are uh, trying to do with, uh, you know, Trey operating as sort of a QB and DeJounte operating as a QB, like spacing the floor is going to be crucial. So for those guys, it's absolutely about how they can space the floor, who they are on the court, but then also off the court too, just sharing a wealth of knowledge. Um, we have a saying in our front office called reinvest your gold. And those guys have a lot of gold over the years. So for them about giving that to younger guys and not withholding only elevates the group. And that is part of our development. Yeah, hey Landry. Um, when we when you look at Onyeka Okongwu, we, we drafted him six overall a few years back. What's our plan in terms of his progression? Is he ready to start? Is he going to come off the bench? What's your vision? Um, for him, his development has been has been really good over the past few years. You know, something he's been working on a lot this off season. Have been spacing the basketball. Um, and what we expect of him is just like we we got to learn some things that are new, and that's not just for him. That's for everybody. Um, obviously still have Clint Capella and we have, uh, as you mentioned, Inyeka. So starter, not starter, I'll leave that to Quinn, but, um, Onyeka has been great. He's been getting a lot of work in. So excited to see how he progresses here. Hi. Um, last season, the, the biggest thing with DeJounte and Trey was the sacrifices that they'd be able to make in order to make this partnership work. How do you see them taking the next step forward in order to have a more successful year than they did last season? I think what I've loved seeing the most out of them this offseason is just how much they've been communicating with another, with one another and um, them sharing with each other, you know, not just who they want to be in this league, but what they want to do together and how that fits into the, the greater narrative of who we are. So they've had a ton of back and forth, um, had an opportunity to work out with one another, not just here in Atlanta, but you know outside of Atlanta as well. So those are all really good indicators for us as they are our leaders on the team. you know. And so for them, they're gonna continue to evolve in their relationships. It's only gonna benefit everybody. Uh, hi Landry, uh, how do you configure what you want out of the power forward position after John Collins moved on after being sort of the power forward for the last four or five years. Yeah, um, you know, John, John was a huge part of what we've done, especially on the defensive end this last season. And, you know, we wish him nothing but the best. I know he's going to do great things in Utah. For him and um, for us, you know, now missing him, like we do have sort of the hole there, not in a hole and like they can't be filled, but uh, for what he brought on on the court, you know, look at a guy like Sadiq Bay and Jalen Johnson and DeAndre and those guys that can kind of play the three four, and however it shapes up from a lineup rotational standpoint, we'll see. Um, but really, like the progression of of Jalen, especially uh, defensively in the last season, really gave us a lot of hope this year. Where it's like, okay, can you put him into the more four lineups, uh, whether he's starting or not? and add in some of those elements defensively as well as his playmaking ability. I think for him, like we're excited for his, his growth this year. 
Uh, Landry, you mentioned you mentioned Trey and Dejounte have worked out a lot this summer at the State Farm Preview event. Can you can you uh, share how much their confidence in each other ultimately helps the front office build a contending team? Yeah, good question. I, for those guys, like for for who they are uh, and the weight that they have on this team, the more aligned that they are, more connected they are, the better it is for everyone. Um, you know, we'll see how that ultimately materializes onto the court. But for, for those guys and for us especially, we need them in the leadership roles that they're in to be well connected. And so, so far, it's been it's been fun to see. It's been it's been a good progression for them both. Um, and it does give us it gives us some confidence going forward. Landry, with so much movement going in the East these past few weeks, what are your thoughts about how this team, um, I guess, stands against us with all the movements and things of that nature? Uh, first, I actually think it's great for the league. I think it's great for us. You know, those are those are factors that are not in our control. And when they happen, you know, you have an ability to, to take a step back and go, oh, well, well, oh, man, the East just got tougher. It's like, yeah, it did. So what are you going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? And we look at that and I think it only makes us more hungry. We see this and we're going to hear all the things and they're going to be what they're going to be. Um, and the communication and the messaging for our guys is you can control what you can control. So that should light a further fire into our everyday work habits because we've got work to do. Hi, Landry. Um, in regards to uh, developing those uh, leadership roles uh, in this team, a uh, big part about John Collins' presence was his voice. How, uh, like, who do you look to to kind of fill that void or is it everybody? It's, uh, it's, it's a collective right now. Um, John did have a tremendous voice and he did speak a lot, um, but I wouldn't discount any of our own guys. You know, you're starting to see more and more out of Trey in this system and his ability to really grasp it and share that with guys and really lead from like a QB standpoint of, uh, of what he's doing on the court. DeJounte, I mean, another guy that does a lot of work behind the scenes, seeing things that we don't know about and on it, frankly, it's like, it's good that we don't know. Like that's the ownership and accountability that we've always wanted with players and what you always see in really good teams. So for him to do that, so as Trey to continue to take his progression and moving forward, as Lauren spoke about earlier with Patty and with Wes, like those, those guys are, are all gonna have a collective effort here. I think it was you that mentioned that. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like somebody in the front row, these lights are blinding. <laughs> uh, you talked about kind of the East getting better and uh, lots of player movement there. Obviously, there's always the, the rumblings around transactions all summer long, and you end up not kind of making the big splash move this summer. How aggressive will you be to potentially upgrade the roster, especially coming off of a, of a playing appearance, which I know obviously is not going to be the goal for this year? Yeah, it's, I think, for more from a philosophical standpoint, like it's something that we're always going to look at. It's my job. It's my group's job to be scouring the land and figuring out how can we continue to improve this roster. Um, but sort of the, the theme and the common theme right now, especially right with what we're doing, is just seeing how this whole system takes shape and the guys that we do have. And then if we need to make adjustments, we'll make adjustments. But um, it's something that's always in the back of our mind, something that we're always looking at. And if there's opportunity, like we'll, we'll try our best to do it. Piggybacking off that, Landry, there was a lot of smoke and rumors around a particular player that we were going after uh, in Pascal Siakam. What is your response to, to those rumors? Uh, sort of similar to the last question, like we're always going to be looking at opportunities to improve this roster. And whenever there's guys that have their names in the mix, you know, sometimes it's just it just is what it is and you know you don't really have to address anything because like that's the nature of the nba but then there's other times where if there's things that come up we do do a good job of communicating with the players and their age and say hey this has come up right now could be something could be nothing but more than anything we don't want you to be blindsided if something were to happen because in this day and age i mean how fast you guys learn of certain things is quicker than what we do at times so um that's the approach that we take in those certain scenarios Both Onyeka and uh, Sadiq are going to be restricted free agents, uh, I believe, after this season. Just where do they factor into your guys' future plans and, and how aggressive are you guys in terms of negotiating some of those deals? Yeah, they're a big part of what we're doing and we're, we're trying to get something done with them. Um, 
love what they've done so far with our group. So we'll, we'll, we'll look to try to get something done with them. In your opening statement, you mentioned, uh, you know, Quinn putting in some things that changed the culture. Mm -hmm. Can you give an example of that? And then just sort of maybe in a larger sense, uh, what, what's different for him coming in with a clean state where he kind of gets to control more variables and, and start things the way he wants at the beginning of a season? Sorry, can you say that last part? Because I... what, What's different when he gets to start fresh at the beginning of a season? So uh, to – I'll answer your first part there. Um, everything from just the aesthetics of what the environment looks like, that all goes into culture. What are you experiencing when you walk in the door? How are you moving about? What are some things that, that change um, along the way for our guys to have that promote you know, the vision going forward? And some of those are nuanced, which I don't need to get into the details, but they do impact our group positively. And when you bring in a coach like Quinn, you know, like there's so much gold there that you do want to pull out and you do want to uh, have a connection with and a partnership with. So us communicating with them are like, well, how is it that you want certain players to go here or go there? Or what is our messaging going to be? And just watching him communicate with everyone on the team um, is truly special. It's not just the X's and O's on the court that we all know and love. His ability to connect with all of our players in a way that meets them where they're at and like speaks their own specific language um, is crucial because he's got to be able to bring that guy and that guy and connect those two and gives them some support and challenge when needed. And he's up for the task and he does that quite naturally, frankly. And then uh, I think just the start of this season with him and having a support staff around him that he knows and he's comfortable and trusts is only going to help because he's going to have to take that information that I just mentioned before and allow his coaches to do uh, some of the similar things as they're continuing to evolve their relationships with guys. So it's all connected at the end of the day. I know you mentioned Patty's shooting earlier. Um, going out and getting him is uh, beyond the shooting. Is there a part of that is assigned to just kind of depth beyond Trey and DeJounte at the point guard spot, given that he's played there in the past? Or what kind of went into that move? Yeah, no, it's, um, it all goes into it. And, you know, the skill of the shooting is there, which we all know. Uh, you mentioned before, just his veteran presence is going to be really good as well. You know, he's... Um, Patty's like a he's like a one two, you know. I you probably see him more as a shooting guard than anything, but I do think like with the depth there, if we ever needed something like that, we'll kind of see. Like, does it fall to Patty? We have we have Trent, you know. We have an up and coming Kobe Bufkin who's doing who's doing really well. Um, we'll kind of see beyond that in terms of the depth from our point guard spot. Hey Landry, what's your vision for the rookies and their development this season? Yeah, it's a good question. I, from draft to summer league to where we're at now, just to see that jump um, is has been really cool. And those guys are working as hard as anybody, from Mo to Seth to Kobe. Um, I mean, they really, really operate well as a group, and they're super hungry to get better. Uh, I would imagine, like we're we're gonna have to see. You know, we we have a lot of guys back. Um, that were playing rotational minutes last year. We only lost John from a minute standpoint. So we are always going to leverage College Spark in our G League. That is just a part of what we do when we talk about development. That's not just some alien thing way over there. Like this is an integrated process where we're in great communication with uh, with Coach Schmidt, who's um, you know who's our new G League head coach, and you know and his staff and. Uh, and just, he's been around like all summer with our guys. So he's learning the system, he's learning the cues, and he's gonna be able to implement that for any guys that are gonna be there um, this year. So excited for that process and how it's gonna ultimately evolve. Any final questions? Can you describe the importance of extending DeJounte and kind of keeping that backcourt pairing together for longer? Uh, I thought that was huge um, for DeJounte. I mean, I can go right down the line and mention every single attribute that he brings to this organization. Um, for him to, to sign that deal with us shows a huge amount of trust and, and loyalty. Um, and we don't take that for granted. I mean, for, for him, I'm happy for him and his family, you know, as, as, as anyone should be. 
Uh, but even for us, you know, as we're navigating new spaces, new cap environment, um, you know, it certainly helps us out. But uh, like ultimately, we wanted him here and we loved everything that we saw from him from a progression standpoint and going out to get him from San Antonio when we did.